So we're now going to fit the left hand lifting arm, the lifting link, and we're going to set all that, uh, fit all that with these two M2, M2 screws and nuts. If you take a look at the lifting arm, this is the left hand side because um, on one part of it um, the lifting link is going to be attached on, and on the other part on the top arm the reversing rod is going to be attached so you can manually or with radio control um, put the valve gear in forward or reverse uh, or reverse and uh, just concerning the lifting link it's actually tapped the holes are tapped so the screws go straight through the link section that they're, they're being attached to or to the um, radius rods and they're um, fastened to uh, the lifting link and then we put a nut on the back of the of the screw just to secure it let's first put the the link arm onto um, the way rod first thing to notice is that the link arm does not fit onto the way rod because the expansion link is in the way I don't know whether I'm missing something here but um, I can't get it fitted and it doesn't matter in whatever position the expansion link is in we can't get this we can't get fit the shoulder onto the onto the ax, axle there because of the expansion links in the way so it it's just, just doesn't quite fit so just let me try and push this down perhaps that makes a difference no that does not make a difference so I think what I'm gonna to have to do is uh, I'm just going to try removing the uh, radius rod and see if that makes a difference. No, that's not making any difference at all. Can't get it in. So, okay, I have to remove the lower one. On the eccentric uh, rod. Okay, now we can fit it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I'll just assemble that back on together, and we'll, and we'll crack on. Okay, so I've got the link fitted here, the link arm. It's now a question of uh, fitting um, the lifting link, and it goes on there between joining those two together, but it's going to be at the back. So we'll give that a go. Okay, fitted the screw through the, through the lifting arm. I'm just going to put the lifting link underneath and attach them together okay there we go just enough we don't want to screw it right up tight there needs to be a little, small gap a bit more so that when the linkage moves there needs to be enough play in the linkage so now we'll attach the other M2 screw see if you can do that again not tight too tight needs to be able to move backwards and forwards okay we now have to fit these the M2 nuts 
onto the back of the screws. Now, both um, Roundhouse and Tom Beatty um, have said uh, what they do in the factory by Roundhouse and what uh, Tom Beatty confirms is that um, to put a bit of um, thread lock onto these nuts and to use 542, Loctite 542, just thread sealant. Um, nothing stronger because, um, yeah, it's not necessary at this scale, with these scales and these size nuts and bolts. However, Tom also said that don't um, put the Loctite on straight away, just in case you have to, when you're testing the timing of the valve gear, you have to, um, for some reason, take the thing apart. So I'm just going to put them on, I'm just going to put them on, but I'm not going to um, put them tight. I'm not going to tighten the nut right up against the, um, the lifting link. So I managed to get the top link on, so, or the top nut on, so I'm just going to tighten it up. But I'm not putting any thread lock on at the moment. It is M2, take it easy. So then uh, we're going to give it another go with the lower one and once they're done then I'll show you the complete uh, result. Okay, this lower nut here, this guy, was very difficult to get to and even harder to get it started on the thread. So what I actually did was um, put a bit of blue tack on the spanner to stop the nut dropping out, um, released Turn the, turn the screw on the other side back a bit so that it was flush, so that the arm was flush, put the nut against it and then tightened it back up and it caught. So there it is, it's on. So I'll just finish that one off now. For those of you that are interested, an M2 nut, you can tighten an M2 nut with an 8BA spanner. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered to, to look for... Uh, my metric spanner so an 8BA is uh, is the right one so the next job is to um, just for adjustment is attach um, a reversing rod to the vertical lifting eye and this is the reversing rod and the idea is you have to open the spring the spring here spring it open the pin goes through the hole and then we and then it springs back uh, it jumps back in place so let's give that a go yep there we go back on okay for this next stage it's all about putting the locomotive in mid gear so i've actually put it on a rolling road that I that I've made. I'm putting it in mid gear now, and the idea is now we've got to find the position, uh, the correct position to lock up the to lock up the uh, lifting arm, the lifting arm, because it's a grub screw. Let's see if we can show you that. It's a grub screw there, there. But to find the correct position, we first have to put the valve gear on this side in mid gear okay what we're looking at here um, I'm just gonna show you uh, how I've got it in the middle how I think I've got it in the middle so it's a question of adjusting this radius arm with the lifting link until the nut is in such a position that when the wheels are rotated this radius arm this radius arm has no horizontal movement so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it out of a position for the moment and rotate the wheel so you can see it moving and then I'm going to put it back into the neutral position just to show you the difference that's the idea anyway let's see what we can do okay if we put it down a little bit and then start to rotate the wheels Look at the radius arm. It's there's a slight movement in it. Try again. 
say there you watch you see it's moving here as I rotate it's going backwards and forwards so if I lift the arm let's say to there see what happens now we're after no movement there's a little bit just That's it. Seen just slightly more. So like that. See what happens now. Yeah. No movement in the arm. Okay, so that's the position that we need to clamp the rod at so that we can fasten the grub screw um, on the lifting arm. That's what we need to do. Okay, I actually uh, held uh, held the rod fast, uh, held the rod tight against the chassis with my hand, and then just used the uh, just used the Allen key just to tighten the the grub screw up. And in the structures, it now says that I'm supposed to keep this this side tight, clamped, and then go across and assemble. Um, the other side. Well, that's not going to happen. So I'm just going to assemble it, assemble it loosely on the other side, and then come back. Okay. So what I've used the clamp to clamp the reversing rod against the chassis, and this side is now in the neutral position. I'll just uh, turn this just to show you. Okay, so now what I have to do is I can get the camera to the right place. Oh, neutral position. Get this guy in the neutral position, the radius rod, and then put it in the right place. Move the, ensure that the radial rod is not moving at all, and then clamp, and then clamp the grub screw here on top. So I'll just get. It's a bit difficult. Um, with the camera, so I'll just put it in the clamp, the camera in the clamp, and get it to, uh, and try and sort it out. So let's see what happens when I move the wheels. See there, the left one. It's actually stationary. There's no movement that way, but the right one. The right radius rod is still moving. Just take a keep an eye on it. Yeah, see, it's moving. So that is not the correct position. So we'll loosen it and try again. Aha! Uh -huh. We look at both of them when it's moving there. Talk about the here and here, and not moving at all. So this is the mid gear for both. Okay, so I'll tighten this grub screw up proper now. Tighten this up proper, check this, and then uh, we should be done. That's forward gear. Reverse. Forward and reverse. 